Now let's let's can y'all mind if we look at uh, Harding, the Harding case real quick, just to see if we can um, understand what they're trying to say here. Now, the Harding case is where. Give me a second, y'all. Now, this is United States versus Harding. This this ruling was decided just two months ago, right? So Brian Steele, to me, is like Brian Steele is always on everything. Like anything going on, Brian Steele is like, feed me, feed me laws, feed me laws. I want to know what the Supreme Court and the appellate court is saying. Feed me laws. That's Brian Steele to me. That's how it feels because Brian Steele in this case has cited so many laws that have just been decided like, I mean, so many case laws and orders from judges and, and Supreme Courts and, and, and appellate courts. Like he he's it's like days. Some of some of them is like days after he's like, yo, judge, this thing just came down. Here's my case law. Now, Glanville was shooting everything down, but at least Whitaker is hearing him out a little bit. And she's actually saying in open court that she agrees with some of the, with, with a lot of the stuff that as far as case law goes, she's agreeing with a lot of the stuff Brian still is bringing up now. OK. Pretty much what they're saying, the district court abused its discretion by admitting the evidence from the search as intrinsic intrinsic evidence of the charge conspiracy and the error was not harmless. Harding argues that the district court abused its discretion by admitting the evidence seized in September 2021 search as intrinsic evidence of the charge conspiracy. He contends that the evidence is too temp, uh, temporally remote and is otherwise unrelated to the charge conspiracy. Now, I don't think anybody here is dumb, but I know some people might not know what temporally remote means. Tempore or tempo relates to time. So meaning temporally remote means too far away in time, right? So it was, it, it's not close. The September 2021 search occurred almost 29 months after the alleged end of the conspiracy. So what they're saying is, the the district, the district attorneys pretty much went and found some stuff two and a half years later and said, you know what? That's connected to what was going on back in the day when they was running this uh, drug empire. And the, and the Supreme Court found that that was not proper. Evidence of criminal activity other than the charged offenses may be admissible if it is intrinsic evidence of the charged offense. Evidence is intri intrinsic if it arrives out of the same transaction of si or series of transactions as the charged offense is necessary to complete the story of the crime or is inextricably intertwined with the evidence regarding the charged offense. Our uh, proceedings explain each kind of interest. Now, this is where I think it could get tricky. Right. It is necessary to complete the story of the crime. This is where it could get tricky. For Brian Steele and YSL. The complete the story of the crime could be used. This exact same case law could be used against them. Why? What's the story of their crime? They're supposedly been having a rivalry with YFN and If Gang, right? If their rivalry or war or gang war continued into the jail and somebody made an attempt on why Finn Lucci's life. That is part of completing the story of the crime because they're saying that they were trying to kill him and it did not, their attempts to try to kill him did not stop when they got locked up. They tried to kill him again. And we have correspondence from the cell phone where they were asking permission from a higher up. Could they kill him? You understand what I'm saying? So I'm interested to see how the state, uh, if I, I would think that the state could make several arguments, but I would think this should be one of them. Is necessary to complete the story of the crime. I know I heard Brian Steele and I think Keith Adams say the stuff that was happening uh, beyond the indictment does not complete the story of the crime. Maybe things like having a cell phone in jail, maybe things like having some drugs in jail, but things like where the people who were your enemies on the street in the same indictment were also being attacked by your cohorts or by your associates in jail. That might complete the story of the crime. I don't know. Somebody had, somebody that's better at law is going to have to tell me. But I'm just saying if I was arguing, that might be one of my arguments. This could be considered to be completing the story of the crime. Somebody tried to stab wife and Lucci and then ask permission. Could they stab him again? 
stemming from the war that started with the killing of Donovan Thomas and shooting at wife and Lucci's mom's house and all of this other stuff. Um, oh, no, there's something I got to bring. There's something I got to bring up. Oh, where my phone at? All right. There's some. Let me see what other notes I have now. So keep in mind, y'all, Harding versus United States. I want y'all to keep that in mind. Brian still gave this to the court and Brian still, I mean, in the court is still waiting for the state to give them any case law that supports the idea that they could still consider acts committed after the indictment happened in this RICO case. Give me a second. I got to send myself something real quick, y'all. Real quick. I'm going to get to these comments, y'all. Keep on sending them in. We're going to get to the comments. Trust me on this one. I will attach it. Uh, keep sending them in. We will get to it. Um, keep sending them, guys. So, let me see. Uh, now, all right. So, let's let, let's just go ahead and jump to the end of the day on Wednesday, on Thursday where we see Mr. Harvey have this wild outburst and he was pissed. I don't, you know, I know why he was objecting, but I don't know why he was so turned up with that objection. Like, cuz was tripping. Uh, let me see. Let me get my headphones. Give me a second. Okay. Let me make sure everything is everything. What? Window. Let me see. All right. There we go. Let's see. Let's look at what's going on here, y'all. And I'm going to tell y'all what he said because it's kind of low because he didn't have his microphone turned on. Disinformation coming in. They don't they have not met their burden of showing that this statement from Umfunk regarding Nichols telling on himself and and basically Nichols trying to get help for himself like he need brother needs to pay for a lawyer we did it for him we don't believe hey no no sir mr harvey stop right now stop right now stop right now mr harvey mr harvey sit down i am not going to have you interrupt court you may object in just a moment <laughs> We will get to your objection in a moment. Go ahead. Okay, y'all see. Thank you, He was really tripping. So now y'all see y'all see what Harvey was on right there, right? Well, pretty much you seen you you heard what Love was saying. Love was pretty much saying like they want to take it out now. When really this is Nichols was in here telling on himself. Like, what, what you want me to do? He didn't, you know. Y'all trying to say it's hearsay. It's not hearsay. He said we did that for bruh. He need to pay for a lawyer. That's what Love is saying. He just trying to get out of telling on himself. And that's when Harvey jumped up and said, whoa, 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 no, no, no. I won't let you lie. The state is lying. She's lying. I'm not going to let you lie. Like, so he pretty much is like <laughs> saying that, saying that uh, pretty much what he was getting at. And he ended up eventually saying it is that the state was misinterpreting what he was saying. Right. But that is what it is. I just one thing that I do know. The judge told them about professionalism and outbursts in court, she for sure told them not to do nothing like that in her courtroom or it was going to be consequences and repercussions. Guess what we saw happen to Mr. Harvey when he did that? All she did was tell him to sit down. Same thing Glanville used to tell all of them. Sit down. And then they ended up ending court a few minutes after that because they said, well, clearly, you know, we just might as well end for the day because the energy is off up in here. So I'm going to just let y'all go ahead and go home and, and cool your heads off. So it wasn't no, it was no like threats of, hey, Mr. Harvey, if you do that again, you gonna have to see me, boy. Or if you do that again, I'm gonna put you through some type of training. Or if you do that again, I'm gonna hold you in contempt. It was none of that. She just, she didn't even bring up professionalism. She didn't use that term at all. Remember, I told you these are dog whistle terms in, in black corporate world. They use these terms, but they didn't use that term for, for Mr. Harvey. They didn't use that conduct yourself in the proper manner. You have a duty to conduct yourself according to the bar. None of that. There was none of that. He got up and started yelling at Miss Love. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, you he pointed at her and everything. She didn't the, the judge didn't mention professionalism at all after that. 
And then she let him get his off, get his joint off. I don't think it was effective because Miss Love still won that argument in the, in the court size. But, you know, she didn't check him for that. She just told him to sit down a bunch of times. And he was saying no, pretty much. He like, I'm ejecting. But, uh, yeah, that was a little bit wild. That was a little bit wild. So they took a break on Friday. Friday was out, you know. Um, and then we'll see Monday. We'll be back with the uh, with testimony and everything like that, right? Uh, 